The Mandalorian. We're four episodes in. I'm trying to talk about the Mandalorian here. Let's talk about the Mandalorian. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you. Right there. And uh, we're going to talk about the Mandalorian. At the recording of this video, we're four episodes into season three. And first off, I know if I don't say it, someone's going to take it the wrong way. I'm enjoying season three. Am I loving season three? No. Do I think it's on par with season one and two? No. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I never was... I'll, I'll always like the Mandalorian. I never really was like, oh man, this is exciting. I can't wait to watch it again. I uh, always enjoyed watching it. Wasn't something I really cared about going back to rewatch. There's not many stuff I rewatch. You know, if I rewatch something, it's, you know, the A Team maybe or Andy Griffin or Seinfeld. You know, I don't really rewatch stuff much, but I always enjoyed the Mandalorian. And I love that it was more episodic than a big event season you know every tv show now has got to be a big storyline for four seasons or one whole season or you know the game of thrones and i don't know what else but uh you know all just got to be one big story and i always liked that this was kind of you know it kind of did like what blake seven would do i know i talk about blake seven many of you probably hadn't watched it but blake seven for one season would have an ongoing storyline but each episode would be its own story. And then near the end, or some little pieces here, they would weave the story in. So, by the end of the season, you get a full story. But each episode, you could just rewatch it any time. It's always like that. Mandalorian started off as the Mandalorian. I don't know, Din Djarkar, I don't know what his name is. Mando, we're calling Mando for this video. You know, it was an adventure a week. It was kind of like a side quest on a game. It was always a lot of fun. You know, he teamed up with some guys that escaped from jail with Bill Burr, some other guys. Always had something he had to do. One time he had to get a frog lady to the beach or something. I don't remember. But it's always a little bit of fun. I didn't take it too seriously. Now, this season here is kind of let me down. But again, I say we're four in, but we're only kind of really three in because one of them didn't really have nothing to do with a Mandalorian. And there are some issues I'm having with it. And I thought I'd address it here to see what you guys think here. First off, I want to get this out of the way. <sighs> I've seen other people talk about the Mandalorian and how they, oh, it means Disney's Disney's ruined Star Wars, or oh, Star Wars is dead. No one cares about the Mandalorian. It's always people that talk about the Mandalorian the most that say no one talks about the Mandalorian. But Kennedy, Kennedy Ke Kathleen Kennedy. Didn't come down and say, okay, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, this is what you got to do. You got to bring Baby Yoda back into season three. He's got to be there for season three. Uh, we've got to sell merchandise. Uh, people give Kathleen Kennedy too much credit. Well, they, uh, they give her too much credit when it's something they don't like. If it's something they do like, they say Kathleen Kennedy was banned from the set. Hmm. It's funny because I heard some of these same people tell me that Kathleen Kennedy was banned from the set when they said they liked season two. Now season three is here, and it says she's in there making editorial decisions on everything. Uh, first off, let's stop the myth that Baby Yoda, ba Guru, whatever his name is, I call him Baby Yoda, I always call him Baby Yoda, that Baby Yoda was only back in season three because of merchandise. They knew since episode one of season one, Baby Yoda was a huge hit. They knew making season two to keep him around. It was the money. They're not going to get... Every, anybody who watched season two at the end of it didn't think Baby Yoda wouldn't be in season three. If you thought Baby Yoda wouldn't be in season three, I, I don't know. You're just... You're out there. Whew, you're out there on Mars somewhere. There was no way Baby Yoda was leaving. So, no. Kathleen did, Kennedy didn't come in. Oh, I got with the marketing department. Baby Yoda, look at these numbers Baby Yoda's doing. We've got to get Baby Yoda back in. Stop all that, please. There's no infighting, Favreau, Canadian, you don't hate each other. It's not high school. Okay, take your bed, bedpan mask off. And these people aren't... You know, I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I love the Star Wars community. But lately, they've turned into old women that used to buy those National Enquirer magazines. You know, <laughs> Bat Boy Lives. That's what they've turned into. Favreau and Kennedy fighting in parking lot. Ugh. Okay, so let's get through all that, and let's just talk about the show. First up, 
it seems like, at least so far, is Monster of the Week. I don't want to see Mando fight Monster of the Week. Okay? That's good. One time, I always seen him fight a, some kind of sea creature. Then I saw him fight a bird. Then I saw him, well, I guess his girlfriend, his girlfriend, not girlfriend, uh, fought a monster under the sea, under the water. But I think my biggest problem with Mandalorian so far, that I do enjoy it, don't get me wrong, is this whole Mandalorian thing, Bogatan. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know who Bogatan is. Uh, the only bows I know is Bo Duke. Now, I know who that is, but this isn't related to Bo Duke. Now, I know she is from the Yellow Seasons, but I never really paid attention or cared about her. I don't know anything about the cartoons. If it don't happen, if it's not live action, I don't really care about it. And I think that's how a lot of Star Wars fans are. Sure, people watch the cartoons, Bad Batch, and Omega Boy, and all that. But, for the most part, most of us just watch the live action stuff. So, I had no, nothing, I didn't know nothing about a black saber. Which, come on, let's be honest, it's just a way to get around using a lightsaber. It's not a lightsaber, it's black, and it looks like a sword. Ugh. But it seems to be focusing more on this Bo-Katan, which I think is a good character. I like her so far from what I see. But it seems like they want me to really care about this Bo-Katan character and the whole Mandalorian mythos and the creed and the history of Mandalore. I, I don't care about all that. I want to see, you know, I want to see Mandalorian get Baby Yoda and they fly off and they have a little adventure together. Is that so hard? I don't care about... You know, sure, they can make me care about the the history of Mandalorians and who's going to get the saber, who's going to rule the house, and who's going to rule the beach. But they haven't set up and gave me a reason to care about it. Now, you're probably going to say, Junk Man, that's because you didn't watch The Clone Wars. You didn't watch Rebels. You didn't watch Bad Batch. You didn't watch Omega Boy the series. You didn't watch whatever. Whatever. I don't want to watch that stuff. you got to make me... You, anybody making a show has got to make you like a show for that show, not because of another show. And maybe if I did watch those shows, I would care more about the history of the Mandalorians. I don't care about them. I watched the Mandalorian to see the Mandalorian. Dan Gogu, whatever his name is. I'm, I'm got a feeling next season he's not even going to be on it. He's going to be Bo Katan as the, just the feeling I got. But I want to see him and Baby Yoda off in his adventures. And that's another thing I get started on. Why do you end season two? Giving him to Luke Skywalker. Setting that up. And you're like, okay, I'm ready for season three. I can't wait for season three. Turn on season three. Uh, where's Luke? How, how how did he get... How's Baby Yoda with Mandalorian already? What what happened? Oh, I had to watch one episode of The Book of Boba Fett. Don't, this is what I hate about the MCU and the Marvel, Marvel stuff. I don't want to have to watch something. Let me all watch Ant Man. And this man was dressed, there was a Hulk Man in it. I guess his name was Hulk Man. It was a black fella and he was dressed like a Hulk. And he was Hulk Man, I guess. Oh, shh. Dog's barking again. Sorry about that. So, where was I? Oh. So, I was watching Ant Man. I enjoyed it. You know, I don't want to get into many of the Marvel movies. And then all of a sudden, this Hulk Man showed up. And it just, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't care. It seemed like it was just added in the last minute. It didn't make any sense. And my friend told me, well, you got to watch some more. You got to watch this movie. And I was like, oh. I don't want me to have to watch another movie. But at least that way, you know, I can still enjoy the movie. And if, the, if Mandalorian did an episode during Book of Boba Fett, which is kind of weird already, if it was just him maybe getting the Naboo fighter, I could understand. But he took a main event, Baby Yoda. And you let that happen on another show. And then you don't explain it. Luckily, I saw Boba Fett, so I knew. But not everybody watched Book of Boba Fett. And let's say years from now, you're watching The Mandalorian. You're not going to know. You're going to be like, what? Huh? How did he get back in season three? So that, to me, tells me that Disney, Favreau, and whoever's decision that was, didn't respect me as a viewer. They didn't respect me. They didn't respect me to give me that Yoda returning, or baby Yoda returning and on the show itself. Now, they could have done the Book of Boba Fett like they did started season one and did the same story but this time through Yoda baby Yoda's side you know him training with Luke and the Mando shows up they could have done it like that or something but nope they didn't they just said no hey he got baby Yoda don't worry about it let's get on with it talk about the creed and the 
history of the Mandalorians and if she saw a monster in the water or not. I don't care. I'm trying to care. I don't care about this creed and the... Oh. But anyway, they left you on kind of a... I don't know if I call it a cliffhanger season two. They left you with a lot of, whoa, what's going to happen to Baby Yoda? And they just just pulled down their pants and took a big shit on top of Baby Yoda. Sorry, Baby Yoda. They did. And that just, like I said, just rubs you in the wrong way. It just makes you think, well, they don't they don't care about telling a good story. Why do I care about watching it? If they, if that's what they're going to do to a major plot line. You just throw it off, throw it on another show. The fans don't care. Hmm. Now, like I said, I know it's not like I'm ragging, but I have enjoyed the show. I just haven't loved it. And episode three kind of didn't show the Mandalorian, you know. Showed him at the beginning and went to Curzon. And I love this episode. I thought this was the best episode so far. I really was, I wish more of it was like this, although I have some problems with it. You know, I don't like that it's called The Mandalorian and shows, it seems like that's the new thing to do now for these Disney shows, is we'll show Book of Boba Fett, we'll put a Mandalorian episode, we'll do Mandalorian, and we'll put this guy in the episode, and we'll show The Mandalorian. I, Ahsoka's going to come out, and I don't know, maybe there'll be like a young Han Solo adventure in the middle of it makes no sense whatsoever unless this is probably going to tie back into the story somehow throughout the season if it doesn't then i'm not then i'll got some complaining to do but i'm sure it's going to tie back in i don't see why else it would do it but it although i love that episode the best so far i really did like it, it just didn't feel like the mandalorian you know it just didn't feel like these characters fit inside what i've been seeing on the mandalorian Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But that's how I felt. Uh, so then last week's episode. Big Bird. No, not the one for Sesame Street. Big Bird comes on. And, this is one you have to watch and just. You just have to watch and clear your head. You're like, I'm not going to think about it. Because they're like, oh, here comes that big bird. It's going to get one of the kids again. Happens all the time. Let's let's fly on our jet packs. We run out of fuel. We never catch him. Uh, then why don't you have a ship ready? Why well, is Bo Katan smart enough to get a ship? And she had never been there. She doesn't know what happens all the time. But she's smart enough to have a ship. But she goes to it, finds the nest, doesn't do anything, comes back, gets them. Then they go on a slow mission to get to the bird nest to save this kid. But they decide to camp out overnight. Hey, Dad, if I'm kidnapped by a big bird, taken to its nest to be feeding to its younglings, please don't take a nap. I know you got to rest up. So they rest up, they get there, they get to the nest, and what happens? Oh, let's watch the nest, let's make sure there's those babies in it. No, I gotta go right now! This guy took a nap in a cave for a day, he couldn't wait 30 seconds. Hmm. And then the bird shows up, I don't know where the bird's been this whole time, it took them like a day and a half to get there. I don't know where the bird's been, but he's, the kid's in his mouth still. So he has been flying around with the kid in his mouth, he didn't go feed his babies. And all this could be explained with just adding some dialogue. But no, it can't because the show's only 25 minutes. 25 minutes. See, it's like they don't care about me. It's like they don't show any respect to me to give me a story where I don't have to. I don't mind. I, don't, I can take my mind out of a lot of stuff. It's, it's Star Wars. I can overlook a, you know, I can nitpick. I can overlook a lot of stuff. But you got to at least try. You got to at least meet me halfway. You know, if you're doing something silly and stupid, you got to at least try to explain it to me so I can be like, oh, okay, I see what they go. Okay, okay. But when you're just throwing stuff up there and you expect me to just say, okay, it's Star Wars, I can't do it. I can't do it. Hmm. I got a feeling, too, that they're, I don't know, they're going to lead into the Ahsoka series and they're just bringing all this other stuff. I'm scared they're going to go Marvel with it or oh, we're all going to meet together and fight Grimble Thrawn or something. You know what this, you know what this season reeks of? What it feels like to me? Dave Filoni has taken over the Mandalorian. I know I'm not the only one to say it. Every, a lot of people have. and It seems very Dave Filoni. Throwing in as much Clone Wars related stuff as he can. Now, I love Jon Favreau. I've been a big Jon Favreau fan all the way back to Swingers. And, you know, one he did a movie called Made with Vince Vaughn that he wrote and directed. And I love it. It's one of my one of my one of the best movies I've seen. I love that movie. Me and my son watch it about once a month. I love it. He loves it also. And I've always been a big John Favreau fan, but even John Favreau makes mistakes. After all, he made cowboys and aliens. I mean, come on, what was that all about? Aliens? 
James Bond, Indiana Jones, John Favreau. How could you go wrong? Well, I don't know how, but they did. They, they went horribly wrong with that movie. So, yeah, he makes mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes. But I feel like, you know, Favreau grew up the era I did, the OT area. And I could see that in season one and two. Now it just seems like, hey, let's just throw in. I don't think John Favreau watches the Clone Wars. He might know a little bit about it because he did a voice. And I doubt he knows a lot about it. And it just this this whole scene just reeks of Dave Filoni. I'm nothing against Dave Filoni. Maybe he's done some good stuff. I just don't really get into the cartoon stuff. I know they got to watch it. I try to watch it. The animation looks so horrible. I know a little bit. Rebels, I did watch about four episodes for it. This cool kid had like gummy bear looking hair. It was blue. It was, it was stupid. I couldn't watch it. I watched about three episodes. Three or four episodes. It was stupid. Uh, Clone Wars, I was going to go back and watch it. And be like, well, you got to watch it in this order. You got to watch it in that order. Hmm. But I, I I just can't. I don't really like the look of clone troopers. I can't stand seeing clone troopers. But anyway, I just I'm just really let down. You know, Picard's on this season. I'm look each week. I'm like, oh my god, give me another Picard. They leave me hanging. I'm like, oh my god, I can't see. Give me another Picard right now. And I can't believe it because I hated Picard season one and two. I thought season two was the worst thing I've ever seen on television ever. Ever it made totally. I wish somebody could come on the channel with me and explain Picard. If you like season two of Picard, please help me because I can't even, it didn't even make any sense. <sighs> so, I guess this is just a rambling video. I don't know why I want to talk about it, but I did want to talk about it. I got, I almost, I almost didn't bring it up, but I got to. This is the stupidest thing I ever heard. And I've heard some people say it, some people I respect, some people I like say it, and I just don't understand it. I don't watch the... Oh, I'm, I'm giving up on the Mandalorian. It's going to lead into the sequels. Guess I can use that for why I don't watch the Clone Wars. It leads into the OT. Well, I like the OT, so that doesn't work out. But Why do you care if it leads into the sequel? Who cares? As long as the story's good, who cares? <laughs> but this takes place 20 years before the sequels, and I don't like the sequels, so I can't like this. Hmm... They're going to talk about the First Order coming to power, and I, I don't like that movie. I don't understand that. I don't understand the reasoning at all. And that's that's the majority, that's the minor, minor people, not majority, and the minor, whatever you call it. You know, most people don't care about that and know about that. You know, there's probably people watching don't even know what time period this is in, but I don't, I don't understand that at all. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I'm not a big fan of The Phantom Menace. You give me a show that takes place a week before the Phantom Menace, I'll watch it and enjoy it. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's got Luke drinking titty milk. So, Phantom Menace got a goat, something, some kind of animal farting Jar Jar Binks' face. I don't, I don't care. And for all you'd always say Luke Skywalker is a farm boy, well, I've known some farm boys in my life and they will drink titty milk. So, anyway, this is, uh oh, give me start. Anyway, let me know what you think about the Mario one. Do you hate it? Do you like it? Do you think Kathleen Kennedy's in there? You gotta do this. You gotta give me Baby Yoda. I know, it's not good. Kathleen Kennedy, their impression. <laughs> Banned from the set. Now she's coming in, telling people what to do, I guess. <sighs> people, when you do, can make up their mind. Fired one week, hired back the next week. Banned from the set, not banned from the set. I like it. She must be banned from the set. No, I'm not liking this season. Kathleen Kennedy's on the set, changing everything. <sighs> when did the fans become such bitches? Now, I know a lot of us bitch about the prequels. But we bitch about the prequels. We didn't do behind the scenes drama. And, oh. Jeez, it's getting hard to be a Star Wars fan. Anyway, let me know what you think about season three so far. And until then, thumb up, turn on my content. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Hey, jump that <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> <laughs>